Hi, how's it going everybody? So today I'd like to talk about another one of my favorite free and open source software projects, a media server called Jellyfin. So what is Jellyfin? Jellyfin is a completely free and open source media server and an alternative to the more proprietary ones such as MB and Plex. It has no hidden agendas or premium memberships. Being a free and open source project would be nice if you could contribute by even just to the documentation or to the code or just by donating instead of paying for something like Plex or MB. So this is Jellyfin and as you can see by default it looks really nice. Now full disclosure I've not used Plex so I can't compare it to Plex but I have used MB and this looks way better than MB. <laughs> Although I've not used MB in a very, very long time. Now, you be, might be wondering, how do I get media for my media server? Now, I did, in my previous video, cover how to use Handbrake to make backups of your DVD. And that's one way you can get media for your media server. Now, it automatically fetches the thumbnails and video descriptions from the internet. But if you're into like Chinese kung fu movies or Japanese anime, sometimes it gets submitted data very wrong and fetches something completely different and you will have to manually go in and use the metadata editor, which is pretty simple to do. You go in here and there should be edit metadata. And if you go in there, you put in the right um, TVDB tag for that and then up here in the right corner you can go um, once you've put in enough information for it to identify it you can go identify and then it will fetch the correct thumbnails and video description and information about that film or tv show now the great thing about using a media server such as jellyfin over a media server such as Kodi is I can access this media server on the go, which is very handy because it has real-time transcoding. So I can play this movie. Now, let me pause this for a sec, show you some of the features. As you can see here, we can cho choose the transcoding rate. This one doesn't go very high because it's an old movie, so it doesn't have 1080p. And we can even change the language and turn on the subtitles. MB will fetch the subtitles for you if they're not provided, which is also very handy. And in the settings, you can ask, tell it which subtitles for which language you want it to fetch. And also here on the movie page, before I click play, I can actually select the language before I start playing the movie and the subtitles. So I'll say off. And from here, I can also download the film. So let's say you're traveling and you're in the hotel and you've got a flight home. You want to download a movie or TV show to watch on the plane. Well, you can log into your media server and download your films and TV shows onto your laptop or phone and have them to watch on the plane, which is really cool. So under here, under continue watching, if you haven't finished watching a movie or TV show, it'll remember where you're up to and you can continue watching it anytime you want. Or I could just click this tick button here, like say if I wasn't enjoying that episode anyway, I could say, no, I don't want to watch that. And next time I refresh the page, it won't show me that. And next up is saying what episode I'm up to. So I can continue watching a series. So as you can see, TV shows here are arranged into seasons quite nicely. If I click into this, it gives descriptions of each episode which is quite nice. 
So Jellyfin can do music as well, and it ranges things into genres and albums and artists and everything like that. Um, I can't actually play most music because it's copyrighted, but I can play this because I was in this band. So I'm okay, <laughs> I'm not going to get copyright strike. So, um, you can shuffle, mix, and I believe you can create playlists, yes. So you can create your own playlist in here as well for your music. So if you don't like centralized services like, um, Spotify, um, Jellyfin can replace it. Obviously, your collection's not going to be as big as Spotify, it's going to be only your personal collection, but at least you know if you've added it to your personal collection, it's music you like. Okay, as for clients, obviously you can view it in pretty much any modern web browser. There's an app for uh, Android, I don't know about iOS. There's an app for Roku. Uh, the Roku app's still very new, so it might have some kinks and issues, and I know music doesn't work on that yet. And there's an app for Kodi as well, but with Kodi it might be better to set Jellyfin as a DLNA server and have it fetch the media from your Jellyfin server that way rather than use the Jellyfin Kodi app. So if you don't have a Android smart TV or a Roku or something like that and you want to have an open source solution for a, a client in each of your TVs. You can get a Raspberry Pi, put Kodi on it, and then set your Jellyfin server as a DLNA server, and then it'll detect all the media on your Jellyfin server. Or use the Jellyfin app for Kodi. So this is the Jellyfin dashboard. This is where you would configure all the settings. So here there's an option for custom CSS. So this is how you change the appearance of Jellyfin. So if you don't know much about CSS yourself, I'm sure others are sharing their own um, custom themes for Jellyfin. So you'd download it, you'd put it somewhere on your Jellyfin server, and here you tell it where that custom CSS is. And you can add as many users to your Jellyfin server as you want, so that you can give your friends and family access to your media. This is where you'd add your libraries. Obviously you'd create a different library for t different types of media, such as movies, TV shows, and music. If you want to, you can create an entirely separate uh, library for like children, for example, so that your children aren't watching something they're not supposed to. Because when you add a user, you can tell it which libraries to give that user access to. Now, Jellyfin has built-in hardware acceleration. So I'm using Intel QuickSync because I'm actually using a ThinkPad T440 as my media server which has an i5 processor, so awesome. I can use Intel QuickSync and it works quite nicely. It also has NVIDIA hardware encoding and AMD hardware encoding, so that uses less system resources. So in some cases that might actually improve performance, especially when multiple users are using the media server at the same time. But in some cases you might be better off going with none. So you would have to Experiment with that yourself. So from devices, you can see who's connected and when. Activity, you can see who's watching what. So let's say there's a someone's finished watching a season and you think, oh, I better add the next season so that they can watch it. Which really helps you man manage your media server. Now, as I mentioned, it has DLNA support, which is quite handy for devices that can detect uh, DLNA servers, but don't have a Jellyfin app.
Now, if you plug in a uh, TV card into your media server, you can even set up a uh, live TV and DVR so you can automatically record TV shows and have them added to your Jellyfin server. I have not experimented with this feature. Um, I do have a really old TV capture card, but it's analog, so I'd have to get a new one with a, you know, a new digital one and maybe have a play with that, see if it works. I don't actually watch live TV. And there are lots of uh, plugins for uh, Jellyfin, which is quite cool. So as you can see, I've added Music Brains to fetch metadata for um, my music because I listen to a lot of obscure music. So having Music Brains added is quite handy. As for getting Jellyfin up and running, it's very well documented and there's lots of install options. In some cases, the documentation needs to be updated or improved. Um, again, that's one way you can contribute and help if you know a better way of doing something. Now, I use the Docker container because on my media server, it's not just a media server, it's a general home server. I use it for lots of things. So having it in a Docker container is quite handy. But there's an option for if you want it to be standalone, maybe the Debian or Ubuntu or Arch, CentOS, and Fedora options might be better for you. And if you like Windows, there's even an option for Windows. Anyways, that was Jellyfin. That's my favorite media server. And I'd hope you consider giving it a try. Maybe if you're using Plex or Envy, um, maybe you'll be much happier using this instead. Anyways, See you later, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.